It's really amazing what you can get for free these days. Now, there are a lot of people out there producing some really excellent quality, useful software that's completely free. Now, one of these outstanding freeware authors is Patrick Chevalier. I'm, I hope I'm not murdering his name too bad. But he's the author of Sky Charts, a planetarium program similar to the Sky or SkyMap Pro. Sky Charts has quite a few bells and whistles, and it does the basics of sky display very well. And best of all, it's free. Are you starting to sense a theme with me here? Uh, the main thing that a planetarium program does is display celestial objects, positions, and some information about the objects in question. Well, SkyCharts offers 15 supported catalogs, including the, the Tyco GuideStar catalog, the uh, only the Bright Star catalog and Sky 2000 are included in the basic distribution, but I think this is pretty reasonable since it keeps the, some of the catalogs are huge, and it keeps the size of the distribution down to about 15 megs. But even with the two included catalogs, you can view over 300,000 stars down to Mag 9. In common with other planetarium programs, you can zoom around the display, uh, various views of the sky from different directions using either the keyboard or the dockable toolbars. The stars are nicely colored and the sky chart does exactly what you'd expect if you've used any similar type of a planetarium program. It, uh, it isn't as nice graphically as some of the other planetarium programs, but it does have a nice, simple, clean feel to it. There's a basic uh, telescope interface for go-to telescopes via serial inter interface, and uh, you can have either the Mead LX200 style controls or a number of other uh, telescopes are supported if you want to use the standard ASCOM interface. I've tested the LX200 interface with my LX200 GPS and it seems to work just fine. It moves the telescope to the star you've selected and the telescope's position is record, reported correctly back to the program. So far you might think that SkyCharts is a, is a competent but basic planetarium program. Well, it works. And it works well. There are two features though that I really like. The first is the quick locate feature. This displays a map of the entire sky. You just click on the star that you want and then it's displayed with its surrounding sky in the main window. I'm always flipping back and forth from object to object and I find this sort of linear map very easy and helpful to use. There is one small problem. It's easy to click on an object that's below the horizon. It would be useful to have something to indicate the horizon level in the quick locate map. Another feature that I, that I really like is the multiple field of view indicators. You can define a field of view of several up to, up to 10 eyepieces or CCD cameras and have them on the map all at once. You might find this useful when you're trying to locate an object and then zoom in on it with a series of eyepieces. I do this a lot while I'm imaging. But I think my favorite feature is the ability to display real POSS or Palomar Sky Survey plates, either from the real Sky CDs or from the internet directly. Now, compared with some other planetarium programs, Sky Charts may have eh, fewer bells and whistles, but it does do the basics and it does them very well. In a lot of ways, this is a, a real plus. One of the problems with some of the well-established programs, and we're not just talking astronomy programs here either, is that each new release suffers from feature creep. The authors keep adding more and more extras to encourage people to upgrade. This doesn't always lead to a better program. So, download Sky Charts and check it out. You'll find the link in the show notes. I think you'll be pretty pleased with it. Moving beyond webcam imaging, 
There are a lot more options available to the amateur astronomer for imaging than ever before. Film, although I believe it's on its way out, is not quite yet dead yet either. And with an ever-increasing crop of inexpensive images available, as well as digital SLR cameras at fairly affordable prices, it's getting easier and easier to expand into the imaging arena all the time. But all the imagers available have different capabilities, different learning curves, etc., etc. So where do we go next from webcams? Well, this week I thought we'd take a short look at some of the imaging, of solu imaging solutions available to the budget astronomer. Is, I don't know about you, but if I told my wife I was buying an S-Big or an Apogee camera or a, a Trifid that cost more than my car was worth just to take pretty pictures of the sky, I don't think we even want to go there. So, I thought we'd break this down by price and, uh, and show you what some of those options are. We'll start with... Uh, under $100 and then the $100 to $500 price point and the $500 to $1,000 and $1,000 to $1,500 price point. And you might be surprised what falls in the under $100 category. Webcams, definitely, but also the Mead LPI and the Celestron Next Image, or Next Image, the uh, Orion Starshoot Solar System Imager, the original version, as well as the LPC, a lunar planetary camera available from a company called Antler Optics. We'll have a link in the show notes. All of these cameras are suitable for lunar and planetary work and in some cases brighter DSOs, if you don't mind a little bit of work teasing the DSOs out of your images. These cameras can work well on some bright globulars. They're also great for double stars and for solar imaging. And thinking outside the box uh, just a little bit and digging around on Astromart eBay, you might come up with a Super Circuits or a similar CCD video camera that can also be adapted for lunar and planetary work. Now, moving up to the $100 to $500 range, we have a lot more options, especially if we add in used equipment and the odd eBay find. But let's start with the standard retail offerings. The Mead DSi at $299, the DSi Pro at $399, and the Orion Solar System Imager 2 at $179. It looks like Orion dropped the Starshoot cooled deep space imager, but I'm going to include it here because I think they'll be around for a while either from other websites or on the used market. SAC Imaging offers two cameras in the under $500 market, uh, the SAC 4 and the SAC 9, with a couple of different versions of each. And I'm also going to throw the Canon Digital Rebel in here because if you shop around a little bit, you can get the 300D or the Rebel XT for under $500. Now this is for the body only, not the full lens kit and everything. So, moving on to the $500 to $1,000 range, things get a little more interesting. I think you'd be surprised just how many cameras are available in this price range. Yes, we move up to the DSi Pro 2. Uh, and the uh, DSi 2 color, the ATIC 16 mono and color at 650, the SAC Imaging 10 or SAC Imaging SAC 10 at 950, but the world of the DSLR starts to open up to us at the, the Canon D20 and uh, or 20D and 30D and the Nikon D50 and D70. Now remember that uh, Consumer type cameras like the DSLRs, the prices are always a moving target, so last year's camera can be a really, really good bargain. Moving above the $1,000 range, we get into the SBIG ST402ME and the Finger Lakes ME2 Max Cam, minus the color filter wheel, of course. The ATIC 16 Mono and 16HR, and several models from the Starlight Express XS, SXVF line. Um, and a camera you might not have heard of, but one I'm interested in, the QHY8 camera from QHYCCD.com. This is essentially the same camera as the Starlight Express uh, 25C. At a price of under $1,500, it looks like it might be a very interesting cooled one-shot camera. And we're going to wrap it up here for this week, but come back next week and we'll take an in-depth look at some of these.